Hello, 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 my amigos. Welcome one, welcome all. It's time for another exciting edition of The Show With No Name. And today's a special show because it's Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. Let's get ready for liftoff. T-minus 10, 9, 9 8, 8, 7, 6, 6 5, 4, 3, 3 2, one, zero, ignition, liftoff, liftoff, 30 minutes after the hour. Get ready, hold on to your hats, strap on your seatbelt, fasten your seatbelts, hold on to your hats, get ready for the ride of your life. The show with no it's show with no name time on Bond Radio. It's the show with no name. Let's go. That's right, that's right, amigos. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. It's time for another exciting edition of The Show with No Name. All right, guys, welcome one, welcome all. Some of you might have the day off, un dia libre. Some of you might have tomorrow off, and some of you might be working both days. Well, either way, folks, we're here to have some fun, to enjoy ourselves. And you know what? This is a very special week because we are just days away from Vaughn Radio Trivia Night, hosted by your teacher, your buddy, me, Alberto Alonso. I hope you guys can make it. It's this coming Wednesday. Do you want to have fun? Do you want to practice your English? Do you want to be challenged? Do you want to meet your Vaughn Radio teachers? Do you want to mingle with your classmates? Do you want to give me a million dollars? No! Oh, sorry. I just slipped that last one in there. Hey, it can't hurt to try. All joking aside, join us Wednesday, November 2nd at 8.30 p.m. at Roll Madrid. If you want to have fun, practice your English, be challenged, meet your favorite Vaughn Radio teachers, mingle with your classmates, and yeah, if you want to give me a million dollars, that's okay too. Vaughn Radio Trivia Nights. Hosted by yours truly, Un Servidor. See you on Wednesday, November 2nd at 8.30 p.m. Let's do this. That's right, folks. That's right. It is literally right around the corner. I hope you guys can make it. I know we've even got some people who are coming from other parts of Spain. So that is absolutely magical. And those of you who live in Madrid, if they're coming from all over the place, you should be coming from Madrid. It's right in the center of Madrid, not far from Plaza de España. The place is called Roll Madrid, and it's located, ubicado, at Calle Amaniel 23. And it's, it's a great place. It's American-style food. Uh, and lovely, amazing, delicious beer. So it's like a restaurant slash brewery, but the most important thing is we are going to take over that place for about three hours, and we're going to have tons of fun. And guys, 
a little round of applause for me because, well, hey, I stopped pro procrastinating and I finished all the questions. I did all the famous faces and I did all the music cues. So I can officially say now, We've got ourselves a trivia night. I hope you guys can make it. It's November 2nd, 2022. We're going to start at 8.30, but I recommend you start getting there closer to 8. Why? Because what we do is we make teams. So if you show up alone, you're not going to be alone. You're not going to play trivia alone. You're going to be on a team. If you show up with five people, I might give you an extra person. But let me let me explain. First come, first served. So the earlier you're there, the more options you'll have of being on a, a good team. And what is a good team? A well-rounded team. Why? Well, you're going to have questions that teenagers should know. And you're going to have questions that Richard Vaughn will know. And you're going to have questions that people who know about anatomy will know. And you're going to have questions that people know about geography and history and music and movies. So you're really going to learn about all kinds of different things, all while having fun, downing a couple beers and making friends. And as I said, so many of the Vaughn radio presenters are going to be there, even though I'm hosting uh, as usual, like when Guy is there or someone else, well, the rest of us go A, to have some fun and B, to support our our buddy our buddy which last week uh, last month i believe it was guy was it guy williams yeah i think guy williams hosted last month i wasn't in madrid so obviously i couldn't attend but i'm really looking forward to it i'm psyched i'm stoked those are two very american ways to say estoy emocionado that is our trivia night and i will challenge you just like i do here on the show with no name and speaking of challenges i think it's time for today's pop quiz That's right, folks. It is our pop quiz. And remember, this is where I put you to the test and I make sure that not you're not just following me and following Vaughn and following the Vaughn radio presenters slash teachers, but that you're getting the, the I mean, the, the how much how much content do I share in one day? I think yesterday, which was a Sunday, I think I tweeted 25 times. Somebody count. OK, so. Um, there's there's a whole world out there. Of course, you listen to the radio shows, but if you're following us on social media, the learning continues even on the weekend. And speaking of, um, if you haven't heard the episodes, and I say episodes because both are available, I, I posted them, or you can just find them wherever you listen to podcasts, but I'm referring to the FYI episodes of Halloween and the bonus episode. Those are available to everybody and what better day to learn some of that vocabulary and learn some of the lore behind Halloween, behind this holiday. As always, same here on the show with no name. I learn stuff all the time. I learn it so that I can share it with you and hopefully teach you some English therein as well. And today we're going to learn something from our buddy Dave Boys. Dave Boys, who is the host of Vaughn Radio's The Salad. Uh, he also authored the book, Canciones con Animales en Inglés. I'm referring to the one and only...
the one and only Dave Boys, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you check out his show, The Salad, every day. Well, you'll, you'll learn English and you'll have fun. Plus, if you've got kiddies like me, there's a great book, as I said, Canciones con Animales en Inglés. And he teaches not just vocabulary, but structure. I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, let's go back 10 years, you know. I would say, yeah, about 10 years ago or so. Vaughn didn't have too many options for kids, right? Vaughn had a couple things, the do-dums, but now you guys have spoken and we have listened, and we've got the Vaughn Disney. Every weekend, you can bring your kids to our offices and have the greatest English classes. Why? Because they're sprinkled, despartidos, with Disney. They're, it's a Disney Vaughn. We've got a couple things with Disney now. Our classes on the weekend, which, again, if you want information, it's grupovon.com or 911-385831. Or contact us on social media. Plus, every Saturday, you've got the Disney Vaughn Collection, which is fantastic. It teaches grammar. It teaches vocabulary. And it does it with some of the greatest characters we've ever known, right? Cars, uh, Toy Story, using some of these classic tales, my amigos. Even The Lion King. Yeah. So you can pick up a copy every Saturday with Marca and El Mundo. I'm very proud to say that, that Vaughn has now turned the tide. Ha dado la vuelta uh, a la corriente, no? the tide, la marea. And now we can say we've got a lot of stuff that is designed for or catered to children. So that's, that's great news. Canciones con animales en inglés, the Disney stuff on the weekends, the Disney collection that's coming out, plus a plethora of other materials. If you're looking for information, go to grupovon.com. If you're looking for materials and you just want to browse, buena palabra, browser es una, un buscador. Y que esta frase es muy importante. Cuando entras en una tienda and the clerk comes up to you, can I help you, sir? Que es muy americano. You say, I'm just browsing, thank you. Okay, solo estoy ojeando. Como, you know, translation, Leave me alone. Déjame en paz. Okay? Seriously. <laughs> All right. Let's see what Dave has in store for us. Preparado para nosotros. His translation is here. I'm going to translate it because he put it in English. Um, es demasiado para... Es demasiado para ti. Okay? Te sobrepasaste. Estabas hasta el cuello. Okay? Esto sería la traducción. So, te quedó grande, that would be a good way to say it too, right? Te quedó grande, eh, te sobrepasaste, estabas hasta el cuello, o era demasiado para ti. That would be the first part. En inglés es una frase. Okay? En la reunión del comité esta mañana. Okay? So, te sobrepasaste, eh, estabas metido demasiado... Mm, Estoy casi traduciendo lo literal ahí. So yes, it's a difficult one because again, that's what Dave is teaching you. He's like, is there an exact way? It says, estabas hasta el cuello. Okay, which is, it's not harto. Es que se te quedó grande. No, no, you're, you're, you're out of your league. Es una forma de decirlo. Te acabo de dar una forma de decirlo. You're out of your league. Estás en un, esta liga es muy grande para ti. Right? That's, that's a very... But let's see the one David said. So Dave said, Estabas hasta el cuello o te sobrepasaste esta mañana en la reunión del comité o directivos. Okay? Let's see what you guys came up with. Dave used a very common collocation. We'll see if you guys recognize it. In the meantime, I'd like to take a look at some of your comments. I've got a bunch of people checking in with us in our classroom, our virtual classroom. Remember, you can participate in real time with us. Let's see what our amigos have to say. We've got Al Entrad Al Aula saying, good morning. Today is Halloween. Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. Oscar says, hello, Alonso. Hello, Madero. If we're calling each other by our last names, what's up, man? 
Uh, hola, hola, caracola says, good morning, family. Good morning to you. Hola, hola, caracola. Monse, Monse says, morning, guys. I have to work today, but at least I know that for these two hours, time will fly. Thank you for being with us, Monse. There's Jay Lima. He says, hi, double A. How you doing? What's up, Jay Lima? German says, morning, guys. There's Eva saying, good morning, everyone. German says, how's your little girl doing, double A? Oh, man. She's getting a little bit better, but I got to say, uh, poor thing. Pobrecita. You know, she is. She's getting better, but she's still got a cough. Man, it's taken. It feels like it's like the never-ending story. Thank you so much for your concern and for asking, German. Lupe says, morning, friends. Let's enjoy another great show with no name. Awesome, Lupe. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Jesus says, hi, double A. What's up, Jesus? Jesus. All right, guys. It looks like we've got somebody taking a look at our pop quiz over here. Let's take a look and see how you guys did. The first person to participate is our buddy born to Iron Man. And he says, <clears throat> excuse me. And he says, you were in over your head at the board meeting this morning. Absolutely correct. Piénsalo. <laughs> if you're in over your head, te has metido en agua profunda, ya no das pie, right? That, that would be a, a translation. No das pie, ya aquí, aquí ya, <laughs> you know, estás en territorio donde no puedes controlar, tú estás, está, I think another way you say, no, like, I think a clear way, you say something about liga, está jugando en otra liga, esto es otra liga, we say the same thing, right, something is out of your league, se te queda muy grande, okay, Lo, me recuerdo como a veces con chicas, hey man, she's beautiful, but she's not out of your league, no, tú puedes, ella está en tu liga, aquí, so excellent to be in over your head. It's used very, very often. And great job there, born to Iron Man. There's Marta saying, good morning, amigos. Good morning, Marta. Let's see. Leo says, my wild guess. Mi adivinanza aquí al azar. My wild guess. You were overwhelmed at the meeting this morning. Oh, that's good. A little bit different. Yeah, overwhelmed. I mean, I could. I'll take it. Overwhelmed is used all the time. So you were overwhelmed, abrumado, like you didn't know what to do. You were flustered is another way to say that as well. And we use the word underwhelming as well. So you go see a movie. You're all excited. And you're like, this is going to be the greatest movie ever. And then somebody says, how was the movie? And you said, oh, man, it was underwhelming. Me decepcionó. Yeah, we never, when I was a kid, we only used overwhelming. But hey, things change, and now we use the word underwhelming. So great job, guys. Wow. There's Rosaline. You were in over your head. Great job. I'm just taking a look to see if anybody said it in a different way, because as you know, there are many different ways to say things. There's Born to Iron Man saying, morning, folks. Better late than never. How's it going? But you're already here. Did, weren't you participating? I'm confused. <laughs> late, but you were the first... Uh, Born to Iron Man, you're late is everybody else's early. <laughs> that's that's what speed you're working at. <laughs> Oscar says, you had a lot in your plate this morning at the meeting. All right, well, Oscar, this is awesome. I'm just going to tweak it. Un ajuste. You had a lot on your plate. Y esto es que, sí, sí, un poco eh, cargaste con demasiada responsabilidad. Tam great. Oscar. That preposition is off, but I've got a lot on my plate. Estoy lidiando con muchas cosas a la vez aquí. No, no, no. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate. Great, great expressions. Just be careful with that preposition. Hola, hola, Caracola says, you were snowed under this morning in the committee meeting. Yeah, the committee, you could say board meeting sounds more natural, but it is a committee. It is a board. It's the same thing. So you were snowed under. Piénsalo. Snowed, se te cayó. Estabas. En todos los casos, eh, estás 
has pasado la, el límite, right? Ya tu cabeza, ya no, ya no das pie, ya no ves adelante, right? You, you're in, piénsalo, you, see, man, you were doing okay, but then you went in over your head or you got in over your head. Y yeah, that's when things got a little bit shaky. Let's see, Rosaline says, hello, good morning, classmates. From behind curtains, I keep following. Thanks very much, double A. Are you the great and powerful Oz? Right, from behind the curtain. <laughs> Después de, detrás de la eh, cortina. Monse says, you were swamped at the, at the meeting this morning. Great word. Swamped, though. Just be careful, guys, because swamped and to have a lot on your plate are great expressions. But these mean a little bit more that you were very busy, right? Whereas to be in over your head, it can mean that you're too busy and that you've taken on too much responsibility. But it doesn't have to mean that, right? You're in over your head. You accepted a senior position and you have zero experience, right? You're in over your head. You've never given a class. And now you have 10 students sitting in front of you like, teach us. That's in over your head. So just be careful because the to, I would say I'm swamped. I, I have a lot on my plate. I'm snowed under when I'm really, really busy. So again, to be in over your head can be that, but it doesn't have to be. It means you're in a situation donde no controlas ya. Right? Think about that. Ya no las pie, ya, o sea, ya, you got to swim. Okay? You got to trust your swimming skills. But these are, guys, we're really looking at some, some very native vocabulary here. Excellent. Okay, let's see. Jay Lima says, Double A, can we use the word overcome in this context? Like this situation overcome you. Well, it would have to be overcame you. I wouldn't personally. Like as I read it, it doesn't sound, right? It got the best of you. Eso suena. Oh, man, that situation got the best of you, man. You you were in over your head. No pudo contigo. I, I mean, that this is the concept. I hope I'm explaining the concept well here. To be in over your head Let's see, to be overly involved, you went too far, right? And now you, you, you don't have that security, you don't have that safety, right? So there we go, my amigos. Rosaline says, I seem to be under the spell of a never-ending flu. Well, get well soon, Rosaline. I know a lot of people are, are sick these days. Well, you know what? When is the time of the year when people get sick the most? Isn't it now? So I'm not I'm not justifying it, but let's get it out of the way before Christmas. <laughs> Lo quitamos de medio. Think think on the bright side here. If we get it out of the way before Christmas, that means in Christmas at, at Christmas, because you can say on Christmas para el día, pero mejor at en la temporada de no. At Christmas time, you'll be in tip top shape. Either way, I hope you get well soon. And yeah, I feel the same with, with Lara. This is like never ending. Oh, and you wanna, want me to let you in on another secret here? <sighs> my wife is, my wife woke up feeling a little bit weak. Un poco débil. She said that she had the chills, escalofríos, and uh, that her body was aching a little bit. And I said, oh. Oh, <laughs> and you know what I did? I went straight to the kitchen. I opened up the cabinets. I grabbed some vitamins <laughs> and I took those vitamins and I, I washed them down with some apple juice. So yeah, a lot of people are, are sick right now. The, the expression that we use is um, it's going around, right? Uh, the flu is going around or whatever, you know, cold, flu, bronchitis. Uh, li listen, if you go to a kid's school, you got all of those. Cho choose your poison. <laughs> you, If you want to go into to school with my daughter one day, or those of you who are parents know, what is uh, what is that? The word, we've looked at the word. Y yo aprendí esta palabra, fíjate. Todo en contexto, eh? Caldo de cultivo, I believe you say, right? It's a place where uh, there's a lot of bacteria just breeding and breeding. Well, that's what we call it, a breeding ground. Right to breed is procrear. So es una tierra, una zona de pre procreación, but obviously of bacteria and viruses and and all that stuff. And ojo, ojo con esta palabra. 
I know you recognize it, but in English it's not virus. No, no se, hombre, se escribe igual, es lo único que tiene en común. So we say virus, no virus, no, ni parece la palabra, eh? virus. Y viral, viral, viral. Oh, and speaking of viral, the trivia night is going to be streamed live. So those of you who are not in Madrid, you guys will be able to attend uh, via internet. So I'll keep you posted. I think we're going to do it here on YouTube. So just stay tuned. I will let you know as soon as I have time to organize that. But let's make it go viral, baby. Folks, we are going to our first commercial break. We'll be right back with tons more show with no name. So stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. On Vaughn Radio. Come on in, folks. It's Halloween. What are you guys dressing up as? De que vais a disfrazaros? What are you dressing up as? I'm dressing up as a, uh, a dad trying to not get sick. <laughs> I'm dressing up as a dad trying to stay healthy. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to this, the second part of today's show with no name. Oh, and before we begin, have I told you about Vaughn Town? Listen carefully. Can you hear that? No, no, listen closer. I'm not talking about the birds chirping. I'm talking about everybody speaking English and feeling comfortable. Listen. <laughs> this is what it's like at Vaughn Town, a peaceful place where you can really learn English and lose your inhibitions. There's a reason it's one of our star programs. Vaughn Town. Lose your fear of speaking English. If you want more information about this immersive experience, go to GrupoVon.com or give us a call, 911-385831. Lose your fear of speaking English and express yourself with clarity at Vaughn Town. There you go, folks. There you go, Vaughn Town. The one and only, and remember, that's just one of the many things we offer here at 
Vaughn. But let's get right back into things, folks, because it's time for today's Say What? Say What? What? That's right, amigos. That's right. It is the Say What soundbite only on the show with no name. And here's where you're going to hear a famous person speaking, and you guys have to break it down. To break it down, desglosalo, okay? To clear it up, you've got to sum it up. Get his must phrasal verbs going up? <laughs> Aclaradlo, resumidlo. And remember, use your best English. Impress me. I'm your English teacher. If you don't impress me with your English, what are you going to impress me with? Oh, maybe, maybe a nice steak, maybe a nice bottle of wine. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, guys, let's take a look. Well, I should say, let's give it a listen. Here's the Say What soundbite for the first time. Please write down what you hear. So I was that that kid out there, and they were they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until my music went number one. All right, there you go, folks. That is the first listen of today's Say What soundbite. I'll be playing it for you in just a moment, and hopefully you guys will be able to figure it out. You get four listens, so this is the second one. Ready? Everybody grab that pen, grab a piece of paper, and jot this down. So I was that, that kid out there, and they were, they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until my music went number one. There you go, folks. There you go. Uh, the guy speaks a little quickly, but at the same time, I think yeah, clearly. So, you know, there's a, a pro and a con. Okay, you know, he's not really pausing very much, but he also doesn't sound like he's got a sandwich in his mouth like some people do. No, como si estuvieran comiendo un bocata de jamón. All right, let's see what you guys heard. Rosaline says, I hope she gets well soon. Thank you. And all of you who are feeling under the weather, I hope you get well soon, at least soon enough for Wednesday's trivia night. All right. Uh, Jay Lima says, can we say this is beyond your grasp? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more forced than uh, you're in over your head. But yes, you could say it. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. Let's see. Vero. Vero says, morning, beautiful people. Are we ready for the spookiest night of the year? <laughs> And then she, wow, very punny, very punny. She says, hell yeah. There's a totally native for Vero. Great job. Hell is demonio, but a hell yeah. Infierno, perdona. But hell yes, claro que sí. So I love what you did there, Vero. Nobody has told me what they're, are you guys not dressing up? I mean, at least throw a, a white sheet over your head. <laughs> you want candy and you don't want to work for it? <laughs> and remember, trick or treat has nothing to do with trato. A treat is una, un manjar, una sorpresita, un caramelito. Like, it has nothing to do with trato. I don't, I don't understand why they translated it like that. Like, trato is to, tr oh, okay, bueno, tratar un paciente, maybe, to treat someone, treatment, tratamiento, but... It's not that one. No se traduce así. Eso es corta y pega. That's Google Translate. It's truco, right? So trick is, que tam, es truco o engaño. ¿Cómo es la palabra? Trick. Un, yeah, un truquito, una jugada. There's another word I'm looking for. Uh, trick. Let's see. Uh, 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 in Spanish, trick. Eh, broma. Gastar una broma. You tricked me. 
me, eh, me engañaste. Me, so, just, uh, just know that that truco trato, I don't get it. It's truco. It's really bromita, o te hago una bromita, o me das un caramelito. Right? Es, es, es la traducción. So, the truco, I mean, it's clear, right? Trick? ¿Quieres que te haga un, play a trick on you? Que te gaste una broma, right? Or do you want to give me a treat? And normally people would rather give you a treat, right? All right, so let's see what you guys had to say. Monse says, I heard an American black musician expressing how surprised he is that white people likes his music after being number one. Okay, let's stop a second there. So I heard an American black musician expressing how surprised he is that white people likes. Tengo problema con ese likes. ¿Por qué gente es tercera persona? Si es they, right? So cuidado, this is, el people are, el people is, es un error. Y el otro es hacer el people como si fuera tercera persona. No sabes las veces. People likes, people eats, people wants. I'm like, no, it's they. People eat, people want. So be careful. Monse, I know you're a superstar, so that's a got to be careful with those little mistakes there. So that white people like his music after being number one. Excellent observations. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Leonardo says, I think I heard a musician explaining how as a child, the black people around him embraced him. To embrace is abrazar barra acoger. To get to a number to get to a number one with with his music. Okay, see in el artículo. To get to number one with his music. I think this guy has a good rap. Hmm. I don't know. I think I know what you're. I know you're trying to give me some cryptic message over there, but I can't. I didn't catch it yet, Leonardo. It's not your fault. It's mine. I need more coffee. <laughs> All right, let's see. Lupe says, it's safe to say. Suenas como una nativa. It's safe to say that he is a musician who is surprised about how his music has been embraced so well by white people. And for by white people. Interesting. So this is a music slash race thing. No, algo que tiene que ver con raza. Y música. Interesting. Great, guys. Great job. Rosaline says, I heard a musician who seems to be having a nice time with friends and speaking about some stories he went through. Great, Rosaline. Wonderful way to sum it up. Hola, hola, Caracola says, I could hear an American going down memory line. Te voy a dar el totally native. Pero es memory lane. Cuidado, line es línea y lane es el carril de la memoria, que es rememorando. Pero hola, hola, caracola. What a great, what a great line. Vaya frase. <laughs> so I could hear an American going down memory lane, and he mentions that most of the people he has been surrounded by, and by the surrounded of, have been black people. All right. What I'm seeing, guys, today, you guys are doing a wonderful job. We're just having these little preposition, these little nuances. Pero al final, ¿qué es? El, el esto. Eh, what, what is life? Nuances. ¿Qué es lo que hace que alguien lo hace mejor que el otro? El matiz. So, when I, I hate, you, you don't know how much I hate when people say, oh, that's just a minor detail. I said, tell that to Monet, el artista Monet. Que, no, no, eso, de, eso es un detalle tío, pequeño. He's like, what? Todo es, todo es detalles pequeños que hacen el grande, right? <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Monse. Monse says, I'll write this down a hundred times until it stays. People like, people like, people like. Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna make you write it on the board like uh like Bart Simpson. <laughs> Jay Lima says, I heard an American con mayúscula nationalities are capitalized in English. I heard an American musician impressed by the way white people embraced his music after reaching a hit. Un temazo, un numero uno. Okay, guys, wonderful job. I think you guys are all on the right track, but you know what? I think it's time for another challenge. It's time for our Spelling Bee. Spelling Bee. Spelling 
Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. That's right, folks. That's right. It is our spelling bee. Just be careful you don't get stung. Que no te piquen estas avispas. All right, folks. Oh, and by the way, speak. You know, I was so inspired by our spelling bee here every day that there's an upcoming episode of FYI on bees. Yeah. So <laughs> I had to do it. Y claro, miramos todas las expresiones que vienen con bee, como the bee's knees. La, es la bomba. Man, these classes are the bee's knees. Que viene de the business. Bueno, no me adelanto. You'll have to wait for that episode. Last week, we looked at cults, sectas. And this week, I just, um, as I said, I re-released the Halloween and bonus episode of Halloween. So you've got a lot of content because tomorrow there's no live show with no name. Tomorrow... I'm going to be, at this time, I'm going to be playing with Play-Doh. I'm not complaining. I like playing with Play-Doh. Now, I'm going to be coloring with my daughter. No? Pintando. I'm going to be, that's what we do. We love it. In fact, before I started the show today, we were coloring and drinking apple juice. You guys have to see me at the tape. My daughter has like a little table. And I sit at the table with her. And you just got to see me on this little chair. It's a very funny image. <laughs> And we have tea and we chat and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. So I was in class technically before I started this class. <laughs> All right, folks, before we start our spelling bee, I've got Rosaline participating. Rosaline says he said as well that he never before played any gigs for white people, but he was embraced by them and had a good time after all. Good job. And Born to Iron Man says, the devil is in the details. That's right. Los detalles son todo. Here's today's spelling bee. Good luck, my amigos. Round one. Ooh, let me get, I got my bell now. Ya que tengo mi, you know, let's, might as well use it here. Okay, these are places, so they will all be capitalized. Here we go. The first one is L-A-K-E space M-E-A-D. The second one is R-E-D space R-O-C-K space C-A-N-Y-O-N. The next one is G-O-L-D space B-U-T-T-E. The next one is V-A-L-L-E-Y space F-I-R-E. And the last one is D-E-A-T-H space V-A-L-L-E. Why? All right. I'm out of breath. I can't go any faster than that. So that's all. That's my uh, my fastest pace available. At least oi. Oi. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, at least oi. At least today. <laughs> I don't know what language I'm speaking anymore. <laughs> I've got this uh, mishmash going on in my head of languages that in the end, something like Chinese comes out. <laughs> All right, let's take a look over here and see what we've got. One, two, three, four, four. Oh, I only gave you five today. I didn't even realize that. Look at that. I thought I was going to give you six, right? One, two, three, four, five. All right, here's the deal. I've got Born to Iron Man, and it looks like the letters are all right. The only thing is I'm seeing a one lowercase letter. So... The way this works is the way it always works. Unless somebody got them all with capital letters, like I asked, then we're going to give it to Born to Iron Man. Although, you know my thoughts here. I'm not hiring you. I'll, I'll give you the, the award for fastest employee on the team. But I can't hire you. <laughs> all right. He corrected it. But remember... Born to Iron Man, if you, I, I guarantee if you check it one second before, you don't have to rewrite everything or copy and paste. What I'm saying is you're making more work for yourself, right? 
But folks, he came back. He is relentless. And it's born to Iron Man. All right. Because, you know, the thing is, you know, if you made a lot of mistakes, well, you made a lot of mistakes. It was careless. But if there was just like one silly mistake in there that you're like, really? Because I know what you're thinking. It's a capital letter instead of a lowercase letter. Okay. Then if it's, there's no difference between a, a capital letter and a lowercase letter, the next time you put in your Wi-Fi password, I want you to just change the one that it is. So if it's a capital letter, I want you to make it lowercase. And if it's lower, I want you to make it capital. Doesn't matter, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Movistar passwords? Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, here we go, folks. This is the second round of today's Spelling Bee. The first place is L-A-K-E space M-E-A-D. The second one is R-E-D space R-O-C-K space C-A-N-Y-O-N. The next one is G-O-L-D space B-U-T-T-E. The next one is V-A-L-L-E-Y space F-I-R-E. And the last one is D-E-A-T-H space V-A-L-L-E-Y. All right. Now Lupe has got it as well. I see Born to Iron Man and Lupe. Fantastic job. <laughs> Great job, great job. Well, today in 1864, in the year 1864, Nevada, you say Nevada, but we say Nevada, Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where Las Vegas is, by the way. Nevada was admitted as the 36th state. So 36th is 36th, right? 36th. Es interesante este sixth. Porque los británicos lo pronuncian sixth. O sea, ellos dicen enfermo más el sonido Z española. Sick. Th, sixth. And Americans say enfermo con S con el TH. Es mucho más difícil el americano, pero ahí no, ahí, ahí no hemos cogido el atajo. So they say, this is the sixth time I've told you. And we say, this is the sixth time I've told you. Just so you know, there is a difference. They, those little details again, American. The first time I heard it, I said to my friend, you don't know how to pronounce sixth. And he goes, that's how my mom pronounces it. And her mom and her mom. Oh, so it's like a thing. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was a Pete thing, not a, a, Brit, a British thing, you know. Live and learn. Me encanta esa expresión. Eso es, cada día aprendemos. Mientras vivimos, vamos aprendiendo. Se aprende algo cada día. Live and learn. No, buenísima expresión. Apúntatela, póntela en el Twitter bio. Live and learn. Viviendo se aprende. All right, so yes, these are all national parks in Nevada. And the first one is called Lake Mead. And this is a very, very popular national park, obviously, because it has a lake. And um, it's interesting because they have, the state has Lake Tahoe, and Lake Mead in the west and southeast. So they, I mean, you're thinking Nevada, it's kind of the middle of the desert, right? But there are lakes, a lot of them. It's it's crazy. And so Lake Tahoe, uh, I'm sure you've heard of Lake Tahoe. It's famous for skiing as well. But there, uh, what I'm seeing here is basically in the center of Nevada, there are there are no national parks. I mean, okay, maybe one, the National Historic Trail. But all the rest are on the borders. So one with California, Lake Tahoe is obviously on the border. Well, not obviously, but it's on the border of California. So Lake Mead, this is a lot of times people go there for spring break. And it is, um, it's, I mean, there are, it's, it's, when, when I say lake, perdona, 
Parece un lago, uh, un, una, un mar. It looks like a sea. And it's picturesque. It's beautiful. Oh, and you know how it formed? I'm sure you've seen this lake. It formed when they built the Hoover Dam. El pantano este famoso. Well, that formed Lake Mead. So if you've seen that picture, you've seen Lake Mead. It's a very, very famous, you know, <clears throat> Lake Tahoe is very famous. Well, Lake Mead in the United States is just as famous. The next one is Red Rock Canyon. Now, Red Rock Canyon, this is just, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. So it's a canyon, un cañón, and it's red. But it looks like you are on Mars, perhaps, Marte, el planeta. It's so beautiful. It's uh, about 30, and, and the interesting thing is, it's 30 kilometers west of Las Vegas. So, like, you can be in the heart of Las Vegas, gambling, jugando, partying, having fun, and 30 kilometers away, you're in one of the most beautiful national parks ever. It's called Red Rock, and they have an amphitheater as well. Tienen un amphiteatro. And they have this theater built into the rocks. Está construido en la roca. It's, it's a, I, I haven't been there yet. It's on my bucket list. Believe me, uh, my wife and I have been talking about doing a, you know, a, a tour of the national parks. Obviously, you can't do all of them. You would need, you would need like seven months or more. But uh, doing a tour of that area, you know, what would be the, the, the Pacific Northwest and then the Southwest as well. I mean, that, that whole area. I'm from the East Coast and the East Coast is beautiful. You've got the Appalachian Trail. The East Coast is absolutely beautiful. But California is like another planet. Nevada, you know, these national parks out there in California, Utah, Nevada, it's like going to another planet, honestly, you know. Whereas New York, you have the normal foliage, you know. It's precioso when you see the, you know, the, the fall, la prima, el otoño, and you see all the different colors. That's gorgeous. But when you go out to Red Rock Canyon, you're like, am I on Mars? How's life on Mars, no? Como la canción de David Bowie. The next one is Gold Butte, okay? Gold Butte. Now, this one I haven't heard of, but it looks absolutely beautiful. Also, not far from Vegas, not far from Lake Mead, because that's another thing, too. You know, you can't just fly out to one of these national parks. Okay, some of them, maybe if you're very rich, they have little small runways, but uh, usually you go to a major city and then you go from there. So Las Vegas, that's a great place to go have some fun. You know, a playground for adults, como decimos, un patio para adultos. But then just a hop, skip and a jump away, you have some of the most beautiful national parks the United States has to offer. We'll take a look at the rest of them. Plus, we've got homophones, name that movie, double trouble and so much more up ahead. So... If I were you guys, I wouldn't even think of going anywhere. Stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. Exclusively on Vaughn Radio. 
And don't forget, my amigos. After today's show, you've got Jules and her program. I was going to say back to basics. No, that's Tosh Pasqua. Jules's program is Let's Get Random. And you can always warm up for this show. Siempre podéis calentar para el show with no name. Listening to Fitz and his program, No Excuses. All right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to this. The second half, third part. Call it whatever you will. But this is the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. And I hate to say it here, but Christmas. Yeah, I'm going to say it. But it's true. Christmas is right around the corner. Now, I know what you're thinking. Alberto, don't be el corte inglés, please. Don't be, you know, the, uh, you know, the mainstream media and these guys who are just like, happy Halloween in August. You know what I mean? Okay, great. But Christmas sneaks up on you. It does. So a lot of people think, oh, I got to get my gifts by the 25th. Do you want to be at the store on the 25th? Exactly. So you got to get them before, and then you have lunches and dinners and all that stuff. So you could start planning ahead, right? And if that's something you're thinking about, remember, Von Tienda is a great place. Even if you're getting gifts for each other. Remember, we just released, this book is the re-released, I should say. This book is the re-milk, as this book is the milk, too. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live from the funeral. Señoras y señores, nos dirigimos a ustedes desde el funeral real. What a sad day it is, for this book is the remilk. Es un día triste para this book is the remilk. It is a book that was loved by many and will be missed by all. Es un libro que fue adorado por muchos y será extrañado por aún más. But don't fret, no, don't worry. Pero no se preocupen. Because the remilk will be reborn. Porque this book is the remilk volverá a nacer. With a new name, a new cover, and brand new audio. Con un nuevo nombre, una nueva portada, y ahora con audio. It's called This Book is the Milk 2. Se llama This Book is the Milk 2. And it will usher in a new age. Y nos adentrará en una nueva era. All hail! This book is the milk too, the new leader. Viva, this book is the milk too, el nuevo rey. Long live, this book is the milk too. Larga vida al nuevo rey, this book is the milk too. That's right, folks. This book is the milk, too. Available with this book is the milk. Also with my first book, English Everywhere, or my latest book, English on the Go. And folks, if you bring the books to the trivia night, if you have my books, I'll bring my stamp. Remind me, I got to remember to bring that. I have a stamp, Alberto Alonso approved, kind of like on my mug that I've got there behind me. So if I've signed it, great, I'll stamp it. If I haven't signed it, I'll sign it and stamp it for you. But not right now. That's at the trivia night. Right now, it's time for homophones. Homophones, homophones on the show with no name. It's homophones time, because homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. Homophones on the show with no name, cause homophones die, cause homophones rhyme, they sound the same on the show with no name, show it no 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 That's right, that's right folks, it's homophones or not only on the show with no name. All right, folks, let's take a look and see what we've got here today. And let's check it out. I love that. Check it out. Echarle un vistazo. It's very American, that ch 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 check it out. Reminds me of the Beastie Boys. Ch 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 check it out. Check it out. Beastie Boys. Any Beastie Boys fans in the house? Oh, I love 
the Beastie Boy. The Beastie Boys, not Chi Chen Chong. Oh, man. I used to know all the songs. I don't remember too many of them. Uh, Sabotage. That's a great one. I can't stand it. I know you planned it. I can't stand it. No lo soporto. I know you planned it. I'm going to set it straight. This water gate. Oh, see, I, I remember some of the lyrics. Oh, what a big Beastie Boys fan I was and continue to be. All right. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's get into the homophones. The first word I'm asking you for today, and remember, the way this works is I don't want you to just give me the two words. I want you to give me the two words that I'm asking you for, and then I want you to tell me if they sound identical. Exactly the same. I just sneezed. <laughs> Acabo de estornudar. All right. The first word is pala, or if you're talking about cards, you say pica or espada. Right, if you're talking about in la baraja española, es espada. But for us, when I think of this word, I think of a digging tool that you use in the garden. So it's not a shovel. A shovel is the big one. You know, you use a shovel to dig a grave on Halloween. Or who knows, to unearth a grave. So that's a shovel. But I'm talking about the little one that we use in the garden, okay? So in Spanish, it says... Uh, Pala, pica, espada. Okay? That is the first word. And the second word I want to know, and then I want to know if they sound exactly the same, is esterilizado. Ooh, eso me cuesta. Esterilizado. And we're talking about a female animal. So I'll tell you, the if you have a, a dog, right, a male dog, and you don't want that dog to reproduce or to breed, then you would neuter that dog. To neuter, the dog would be neutered, okay? Eso es el, lo que busco, pero para la hembra. So neutered. So esterilizado. Pero not like esterilizado, like I sterilized my hands before I performed the operation. No, I mean like castration kind okay but again we're talking about a female animal so neuter is what we use so it's that word esterilizar pero el participio esterilizado Ooh, you know these words hmm, we'll take a look let's see if, uh we've got some people here in the chat room participating with us let's see who's on board eh, 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 esd says good morning everyone good morning to you esd let's see eh, jay lima says i wonder why do spaniards have to celebrate halloween all it is is just marketing well i mean it's like every holiday right jay and again like I'm I'm I don't care personally. I know what you mean. I agree personally, but I I don't care if people sell. I prefer people celebrating than angry and you know uh, on Twitter uh, giving people shit. So <laughs> you know I, I get what you mean. We know what we call these holidays, especially like Valentine's Day these days, Hallmark holidays. Why? Because Hallmark is a card company. They make greeting cards. So we call it a Hallmark holiday porque viene de, es para comprar, lo ha creado una empresa, right? So why do, well, and Jay Lima, I'm going to stop you there. Spaniards, I think it's celebrated in Germany. I mean, a lot of, a lot of places, right? So I don't think it's just a Spanish thing. I think many people, it's like, why do we celebrate in the United States Cinco de Mayo? Because we care about the independence of Mexico. No sé si ni, ni si es eso, ves, no sé ni... Pero se, se celebra en Estados Unidos. Se celebra, I said. You, you, me, me has oído bien. Cinco de Mayo. Why? Because people drink tequila and margarita. So we don't even know why, you know. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. And <laughs> I don't think it's just a Spanish thing, you know. Um, Monse, Monse is with me. Jason, I don't know about you, but I'm always ready for a good party. Call it Castañada, Halloween, or whatever you want. Bueno, aquí es, no es All Saints Day, Día de Todos los Santos. All I know is I don't have to work tomorrow. So that works for me, okay? <laughs> like, you can complain, guys, about the holiday and the, the corporate. You know me, I'm, 
I agree. You're never going to hear somebody agree more than me. But if I get the day off, I'm all for it. Me apunto hasta. I don't care. I'll do pagan. Well, it is a pagan holiday, really. But I'll do it. I think most holidays are pagan. What I've noticed is most of the holidays we celebrate are pagan. But again, if you really look at it, then you wouldn't celebrate any of them. Because Christmas we took from this and this one is taken from this culture. So we, we could say all holidays then are cultural appropriation. But then we're going down that deep hole that, you know, well, I would do, you know, I always say this, celebrate what you want and let others celebrate too. You know, you don't want to be Ebenezer Scrooge on Christmas or the Grinch. Don't be that guy. Even if you are, keep it to yourself. I, I get it though. I get it. I get it. And you have some of your classmates um, who agree with you as well, as well as I do. Uh, Jay says, AA should be happy. We're more Americans each day. Yeah, it's true. But uh, guys, I always tell people this. Don't copy everything we do. Copy the good stuff. Don't copy our eating habits. Don't copy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I would not copy that the United States does. Guns and schools and all that. You know, that I wouldn't. That's not something to, to, to emulate. <laughs> Holidays? Ah, who cares? <laughs> so, you know, Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, I don't know if you want to copy us there. <laughs> Look at how well it's working out for us. We have a nation full of obese, sick people. So copy us on the good stuff, you know? <laughs> Let's take a look at the homophones before we get into a debate on which holidays to celebrate or which ones. Celebrate the ones that you like. Don't celebrate the ones you don't like. That's what I would say. Uh, to each his own. Cada uno lo suyo. Now, here in our homophone section, though, there's no gray area. This is you either got it or you didn't get it. Let's take a look and see what you guys came up with. German says the words are mm and mm. Those are the correct words, German. And he says they are homophones. All right. Born to Iron Man agrees with you. Hmm, interesting. All right. I'm going to stop re reading the... Uh, uh, <laughs> Rosaline, I love what you did there because you guys are debating now. I don't want to celebrate it. I do. I don't want to. As I said, do whatever you want. <laughs> don't try and convince me what to do, though. It's like with people, you want to cut off your penis. Do it. Don't ask me to do it. Don't ask me to be okay with it because I just think that, I mean, I would never cut off a finger or anything if I didn't need to. Like, I avoid operations and hospitals, period, and medicine whenever possible. So, Rosaline, I love it. You got to fight for your right to party. <laughs> we were quoting the Beastie Boys before. Hay que, hay que luchar para tu derecho para festejar. <laughs> and if I, as I said, if I got the day off, then that's awesome. All right, so let's get back because we're we're going on tangents here. I like it. I love to to chat and shoot the shit. It's tarde palique, but we've got a lot to cover, folks. Okay, so the first word is spade. Spade. Okay, in Spanish, uh, you I oh, let me find it now. Oh, here it is. Uh, spade. Pala, pica o espada. Okay, you use a spade in the garden if you want to plant something. You have the ace of spades. Any uh, any fans of Lemmy over here? Let me explain. <laughs> Motorhead, ace of spades. Very famous song. Uh, ace is ass and spades is that, that thing. Spade, spade. And the very popular expression, let's call a spade a spade. Las cosas por su nombre. Let's call a spade a spade. I love that expression. If you didn't know it, Write it down. It's cuando alguien quiere discutir. You're like, guys, let's call a spade a spade. Las cosas, eso es esto y eso es eso. Okay? Let's call a spade a spade. Okay, and the second word, as I said, you, a lot of times we use the words together. If you have pets, take them to get neutered. That's if they have a penis. And spade. And the verb is to spay. S-P-A-Y. Which is to castrate, but in the female sense, a female animal, to neuter a female, esterilizar, castrar. So that would be to spay. So if you were traveling, let's say, and it was one of the requirements, is your cat spayed? Let's call a spade a spade. Is your cat spayed? 
Do they sound the same? Absolutely. Great job to our buddy German. German was the first one to get it there. Let's call a spade a spade. The cat got spayed last week. And as I said, a lot of times you say the two together, neutered and spayed, because they're referring to both. All right, my amigos. Also, we need to finish up. Well, let me give you, I got to give you the say what sound bite. Let me give you the say what sound bite before I forget. This is the third listen of today's say what sound bite. Please write down what you hear. So I was that that kid out there and they were they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until my music went number one. All right, there you go, folks. There you go. Also, we need to uh, finish up our spelling bee. We were looking at national parks in Nevada. The next one is one of Nevada's top tourist attractions. Again, not too far, about 80 kilometers from Las Vegas. So what do you see in here? If you go to Las Vegas, you don't only have to see Las Vegas. If you rent a car, you can like, you know, you can take day trips and go see some of the most amazing national parks ever. And Valley of Fire, I mean, solo piensa el nombre. I'm looking at the picture. Parece un valle de fuego. It's beautiful. The colors in this part of the United States, the red, there's a part called the, esto está en California, pero pegado, called the Painted Desert, que es de colores. Parece que alguien ha cogido un pincel y lo ha pintado. It's, it's absolutely breathtaking. And the last one on to today's list is Death Valley. Y te, quiero que, ya que hemos visto la palabra valle en inglés, how do we pronounce it? Valley, valley, no vale, valley, valley. Okay, and Death Valley, oh man, it is... It's pretty crazy. You, you want to feel like you're on the moon? Go to Death Valley. And these are just a few of the many national parks that you'll find in Nevada. Folks, it's time to move on to another section. It's Name That Movie. Name That Movie. <laughs> That's right, that's right, amigos. It's Name That Movie only on the show with no name. And as always, we're going to take a look at a movie, and we'll see if you guys can guess the movie. First, I'll give you the trailer, and then we'll take a look at a scene from the movie. Here we go. <clears throat> After their high school basketball coach passes away, five good friends and former teammates reunite for a 4th of July holiday weekend. All right, there you go. So after their high school basketball coach passes away, to pass away, fallecer. And ojo con la palabra coach. He oído gente pronunciar mal couch, que es sofá, y coach. So vamos a decir esta frase. The coach is on the couch. El entrenador está en el sofá. They are not homophones, although I've heard people pronounce them that way. All right, so uh, 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 he passes away. To pass away or to pass on is fallecer. Five good friends, cinco buenos amigos, and former anterior, former teammates, um, gente del mismo equipo, reunite. And reunite is reunirse, pero después de mucho tiempo en inglés. Si no, sería get together. Right, reunirse. Vamos a reunirnos este fin de semana. Let's get together. Vamos a reunirnos porque no nos hemos visto en mucho tiempo. Let's have a reunion. Let's reunite. Okay? For a 4th of July holiday weekend. Now, that would be cool. If you guys started celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> well, you do. At the U.S. Embassy. I've celebrated it in Spain. Also, the, um, the U.S. Embassy is technically American soil. It's tierra americana. No, la embajada es técnicamente, it's under the jurisdiction of the country that operates it. So technically, I celebrated the 4th of July in Spain. So <laughs> are you guys mad at me for celebrating? <laughs> Can I celebrate the 4th of July? I am American. 
All right. Well, let's take a look and see if anybody got the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a winner. It's Born to Iron Man. The movie is called Grown Ups. That's right. Grown Ups. It's an awesome movie. It's right up my alley. It's el tipo que me gusta a mí. And it's funny because you can say the word adult or adult. Los dos, I can't think of pronuncia adult. He's an adult. He can make his own decisions. He's an adult. Ambos son aceptados. No es ni británico ni americano eso. Eso ya es como, hay gente que dice adult. Es como the only, a veces yo digo the y a veces digo the. The only time I remember. Cuando también es the only time. So, esto es uno de estos. Y mi hija sabe esta palabra. La, la película se llama Grown Ups. Right? Because I, I say, she goes, why can Poppy? Because Poppy's a grown up. Yo soy un adulto. So uh, she knows the word grown up. And it, it makes sense. Un crecido. Uno que ha crecido, right? He's grown. He's all grown up. What is he? A grown up. Toma. <laughs> it's a great. Si no sabes cómo pronunciar adult, adult, pues vete con grown ups. All right. And uh, this Adam Sandler wrote this and he was set to release the movie in the mid 90s. And Chris Farley, who had worked with him a lot, he was the Beverly Hills Ninja. He died in 1997. So that stopped the project and it shelved it. You know the word shelf? Well, a shelf is un estante. So to shelve something is ponerlo en el, en el estante. No, a reservarlo para otro día. And it was shelved for over a decade. And then what happened was they said, all right, we're going to do it now, but we're going to do it with other people. Kevin James, the guy who plays the mall security cop, el policía del, el segurata del, uh, es que no sé cómo llamáis las películas aquí. So, but the movie finally was made and uh, it starred Chris Rock. Kevin James, who played the role Chris um, Farley would have played. Rob Schneider, he's Deuce Bigelow. All these guys are from Saturday Night Live, by the way. Well, most of them. And David Spade. You know the word spade, right? Pero no se escribe David esterilizado. It's David Pico, David Spade, right? Famous actor. So, all right, my amigos, let's take a look at the scene in question. Eric says, I got to make a sissy. Now, that's a very weird way of saying I got to go pee pee. Where I come from, a sissy es un, una persona floja. Oh, don't be a sissy your whole life. It is muy flojo. No aguantas nada. Right? It's a word. But this is a weird, this is like he's baby talking. Está hablando como un bebé. And Kurt says, come on, you made three already. Ya has hecho tres pipis. And Rob says, it must be oozing out. At this point, we've looked at that word before to ooze. Uh, I think of um, rezumar, like there was blood oozing or pus, el pus. That's something that oozes out. It's a great word. O, O, theta, E. He goes, it must be oozing out at this point. And Eric says, shut up. Kaya, I'm trying to concentrate. And Kurt says, it's taking a piss. Es mear. It's not the SATs, the uh, standard achievement test. The SATs are the exams that you have to take to get into college, a universidad. Son los que exámenes estos. So he goes, tío, estás meando, no estás haciendo el examen de entrada a universidad. The SATs. And then Lenny says, are you peeing? Estás me meando? Or is it a diesel truck turning off? O oh, es un camión diesel apagándose. <laughs> We say diesel, como el actor, Vin Diesel, no diesel. And he goes, what the hell is that? And Marcus goes, listen, hamper bottom. Now hamper es la cesta de la ropa. Culo y bottom es culo, tra trasero. <laughs> Oye, trasero de, de cesta de la ropa. <laughs> listen to hamper bottom. I think he's sending a message in Morse code. El código Morse, beep, 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 beep. He's sending a message and more is cold. Beep, beep, beep. Getting old. Stop. Can't pee. Porque antes decían stop en vez de punto, right? So getting old. Envejeciendo. Stop. Can't pee. Stop. 
Reek like an asparagus. To reek is apestar, it's the same as stink. Reek like an asparagus, stop. Even though I didn't have any, stop. So there's five friends, como dicen, hablando de pis, los británicos, they're taking the piss. Se están metiendo uno con el otro. I remember the first time I heard that. My friend said, are you taking the piss, mate? I'm like, no, I'm okay. He goes, no, no, you're taking the piss. I'm like, nope, I'm fine. He's like, no, 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 mate, you're taking the piss. And I'm like, I am not. And it was, te estás riendo de mí, es lo que me vino a decir. So I thought I spoke English. Guys, we have to go to our final commercial break. I can't believe it myself. We'll be right back with the fourth and final part of today's show. So stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. Right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back to this, the fourth and final part of today's show with no name. But don't worry, just because this show ends doesn't mean the English learning ends. We've got programs all afternoon long so that you can practice your English and have fun. Pasarlo bien. And guys, we're going to have fun in this fourth and final part of the show. And you know what time it is. It's time for today's Double Trouble. Double Trouble, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double. Double Trouble. I said double. Double Trouble. Double. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's Double Trouble only on the show with no name. And as always, this is where I give you a translation and you have to use the same word twice. I think you guys can handle this one. Maybe not. We'll take a look right now. Here it is, today's Double Trouble. Remember, you have to use the same word twice, okay? Es hora 
de dar la versión correcta o la verdad. ¿Ok? So es hora de dar la versión correcta o contar la versión correcta. Contar la verdad, lo que ocurrió. ¿Ok? Que quede claro que esto es lo que ha pasado. I'm trying to translate it, make it as clear as possible. Es hora de dar la versión correcta barra la verdad. Él no puso su alarma. Esa es la verdad. <laughs> okay. So remember, you got to use the same word twice. Rosaline says, oozing is a bit like flowing. Yeah, a little slower. Right? I think flowing, I think of a river. Oozing, I think of pus or blood or something that's a little thicker, más viscoso. That's, that's how I would say if you want to split hairs, buscarle tres patas al gato. Flow, I would think water, air, and ooze is like a slot. Ooze, I think of Ghostbusters, hablando de. Who are you going to call? You know the, the Ghostbusters 2 in el metro, the, that slime that's oozing. Eso es oozing. Eh, siempre un ejemplo de las películas, eh? Here come the movies to save the day. Music, music and movies always help us clear things up here on the show. All right, well, let me give you the Say What Soundbite 2 for the fourth time. As far as I know, maybe I missed the comment, I don't think anybody got it yet. All right, well, folks, here it is, the fourth and final listen. So I was that that kid out there, and they were, they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until... My music went number one. All right, there you go. Rosaline says, oozing is flowing out from a body. Doesn't have to be. Are you asking me or are you telling me? I'm, I, it's, a, it's, it's a statement. I disagree, but okay. <laughs> you can also be oozing with energy. It's, like, it's used figuratively as well, right? Um, she's oozing with charisma. It's not really technically... so. Uh, I would even, in, in my personal life, I would use it a million times more talking about that oozing than the liquid or thick thing flowing. Catch my drift, maybe yes. So, but I love your curiosity. I applaud it. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, oozing. Uh, it's oozing out of every pore. Hay como frases escritas. But yes, I guess you could relate it to the body, but it doesn't have to be. Right? The sewer was oozing with things. It was coming out of places. It's something coming out slowly or else it would be flowing, as we said. So just go with the flow. Déjate llevar. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. German is the first one taking a stab at it over here. And German says, it's time to set things straight. German, so far, so good. Buena expresión. Hasta ahora, bien. It's time to set things straight. Es hora de decir las cosas como han pasado. Decir la versión correcta. Again, that's very yours, mine, right? It's time to set things straight. He didn't set up the alarm. All right. Now, German, I like what you did here. Okay. The only thing is you got an extra letter. You got an extra preposition in there. We don't say set up the alarm because to set up is montarlo. I would think you're like, you know, there's like an elaborate process. Like I have to set up my wife. I have to set up my router. When you first buy a, a router and you get your, everything has to be, es más montar, no, conectar. So that, that it's a little bit different. It's a little more involved. Pero si dices set, te vale. I'm going to set my alarm. So excellent job. It's time to set things straight. He didn't set his alarm. Okay, another way you can say it too is to set the record straight. Let me set the record straight. Las cosas, te voy a contar lo que pasó de verdad. Okay, I'm going to set the record straight. I'm going to set it straight. I'm going to set things straight. Okay, and straight means franco. Straight means the way it's, you know, sin curva, sin, no, para que lo veas todo. Think about straight as that, all right? And ladies and gentlemen, not only have you guys done a wonderful job on Double Trouble, 
It looks like we've also got a winner in today's Say What Soundbite. A nice round of applause for Monse. All right, all right. It's time to set things straight. It's time to set the record straight. He didn't set his alarm. And if you don't set your alarm, it's not going to go off. Y esa, es, esa sí que es chunga, ¿eh? To go off. Suena a apagar. No, es sonar. O estallar. Pero en el contexto lo vas a saber. The bomb went off in Terminal 4. ¿Hay, ¿Hay alguna duda de lo que es went off? No. Porque es bomb. ¿Qué, qué más puede hacer una bomba? You, you don't have too many options there. Right? Okay, so. Uh, excellent, excellent job. All right. Uh, and Monse. Monse wants to take a stab at the double trouble, wording it a different way. Escribiéndolo de otra manera. She says, don't beat around the bush. Okay? Because the alarm you didn't push. <laughs> I like it because it rhymes. You know how I feel about rhyming stuff. <laughs> don't beat around the bush. Buena, muy, muy nativa. No andes por las ramas, because the alarm you didn't push. <laughs> okay, so the key vocabulary that we looked at in this double trouble. To set things straight, to set the record. Piensa the record en un juicio. Esto viene de un juicio, eh? Your Honor, I'd like to set the record straight. Que quede en record, que quede grabado. Es ese record, right? So... I'd like to set the record straight. It's time, como yo dije, it's time to set the record straight. He didn't set his alarm. All right, guys, excellent job. And now it's time to move on to your joking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch. He walked into the bar. <laughs> um, you're joking. That's right, amigos. That's right. I've got a couple jokes for you. Well, I figured since it is Halloween, I would give you some Halloween jokes. And yesterday we looked at a few. Today we can look at a couple more. And then even if you don't celebrate Halloween, you can tell a couple Scary jokes. <laughs> All right, here we go, my amigos. The first joke. I got a couple, as I said. I prepared a few here for you since it's a special occasion. How do vampires get around on Halloween? You say vampiro. We say vampire. <sighs> How do vampires get around? ¿Cómo se mueven? On Halloween. On blood vessels. <laughs> <laughs> and the blood vessels. <laughs> blood vessels. <laughs> uh, no? <laughs> I think it's hysterical. <laughs> Look at me, I'm crying over here. So how do vampires get around on Halloween? On blood vessels. <laughs> and they suck. <laughs> they suck, chupan, pero they suck es son lo peor. <laughs> There's two. Y esa, la segunda no estaba planificada, eh? So, how do vampires get around on Halloween? On blood vessels. <laughs> well, a vessel is a kind of boat. Navío, embarcación. But also, you have blood vessels in your body. You call them vasos sanguin sanguine. Oh, nunca me sale esa palabra. De la sangre. <laughs> que tienen que ver con la sangre. <laughs> you get it now? Vaso. It's funny. I didn't know that they were called vasos in Spanish. Como vaso. That, there's a double trouble in Spanish. ¿Quieres un vaso o un vaso de la sangre? And you're like, whoa, this is Halloween, huh? <laughs> un vaso con sangre. So, yeah. We call it a blood vessel. But the Titanic was a vessel as well, right? The Titanic was a vessel. Um, there are vessels all over the sea right now. It, you can even call an airplane a vessel, right? It's a kind of ship. It's another word for ship, right? It's also a recipiente. 
a container for liquids as well. Si lo piensas, los que llevan aceite crudo, those are vessels that have vessels on them, okay? And I'm sure the people who are operating them have blood vessels. So there are three vessels on that ship, <laughs> on that vessel. <laughs> All right, did you guys get it now? And they suck. They suck. Es son lo peor, pero <laughs> que chupan. Oh, and Jay Lima. Look, at for somebody who doesn't celebrate Halloween, excellent. Vampires are a pain in the neck. <laughs> un coña, un, un pesados, right? Son pesados. And a pain in the neck, un dolor en el cuello. <laughs> All right, I got more, though, for you here. Okay, so the vessel one. Oh, and so why didn't the skeleton go with the vampire? You know, the... The skeleton, you know, he he didn't go with the vampire because the vamp. Remember, I said the, va the vampire was going around on his blood vessel. So why didn't the skeleton join him? Ah, he didn't have the guts. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have the guts. <laughs> The, the guts. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Good, good, good stuff. I got more for you, though. All right, here's one. Let's see if you guys know what to do with this. A ver si sabéis qué hacer con un knock-knock joke. Porque si yo lo digo en Estados Unidos, todo el mundo lo contesta. Es como... No? Tienes que hacer el tan-tan. Okay. So, knock-knock, te toca. ¿Qué dices tú? Who's there? Right? Entonces, knock, knock, jokes are knock, knock. Who's there? Muy bien, Monse. Philip. Ok, Monse. Philip who? O sea, si alguien te cuenta un knock, knock joke, you have to know who's there y luego decir lo que ellos dicen, who. Right? It's, it's, it's a classic one. Ok, so, knock, knock. Vosotros. Who's there? Philip. Vosotros, Monse, muy bien. Philip, who? Philip, my bag with Halloween candy, please. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, my bag. <laughs> o sea, los knock knock jokes vienen de juegos de palabras, right? They, they they're they're just typical one. Watch. So knock knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Why are you crying? Lo pillas? Boo. Cuando alguien llora en inglés, we say boo who. Pobrecito, está llorando. Boo who. Entonces, las pillas? Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Why are you crying? All right, guys, we'll move on from our joking section. But you've got a few good jokes, and some of them, you guys, I see over here, you're coming up with your own as well. That is awesome, and that's worth celebrating. So why don't we celebrate in today's famous birthday trivia? That's right, amigos. That's right. It's famous birthdays only on the show with no name. And let's see who's celebrating a birthday today. The first person was born in 1963. He was in Saturday Night Live, and he went on to do many, many movies. He played the lead role, el principal, in Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo, also in the sequel, Uh, he was also in The Animal, The Hot Chick, La Pivona, La Piva, because he turns into a girl in this movie. I, I don't even know if you're allowed to make those kind of movies now. The Bench Warmers, Los Calienta Banquillos. He was in Big Stan as well, and he was also in Grown Ups, which was today's Name That Movie. Now, he was on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live from 1990 to 1994. That's when he was a cast member for four years 
but he was hired in 1988. And initially he was hired um, because uh, he was a writer. That A lot of people get their start as writers. Conan O'Brien, the famous um, uh, late night talk show host in the, in the United States was a Simpsons writer. He worked on the Simpsons and a lot of people. So a lot of people who later, uh, Bill Murray, a lot of, you know, the guys from Saturday, Saturday Night Live, firstly, supposedly they write their own sketches, but some people write sketches and perform them. And some people are just writers. But if you're a good enough writer and they like, you know, also, also they look to have different, you know, you don't want the same character. If they, you already have like a, an Italian, you know, good looking guy, then you want a different kind of character as well. Right. Just so you have, you can have, you have more range. You can play different characters, do different impersonations. So yeah, uh, I was a big friend of the, a uh, big friend. <laughs> I wish <laughs> I was a big fan of this guy. Still am, still am. I loved all of those guys. They called them the bad boys of Saturday night live. Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, David Spade, and Chris Farley, the late Chris Farley. And up next, we've got a rapper, producer, and actor. He is one third of the Beastie Boys. That's right, the Beastie Boys, who were formed in New York City in 1981. Get out of here. So are you telling me that I mentioned Beastie Boys on purpose before? Kind of, but not really. It came up, surgió, and then I said, wow, that was a little clue I couldn't have even, you know, predicted. No podría haberlo ni predecido. So I gave you some clues there. Beastie Boys, he's one of them. You got, well, I'll put, let's put it this way. He's not the one that passed away because one of them passed away. All right. And that's uh, Mike D. Mike D, I think. No, no, it was MCA. MCA passed. I'm getting my guys all mixed up. Yes, MCA, Adam Yawk, was the one who passed away. So, so now you got 50-50 here. It's one of the other Beastie Boys. Check, 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 check it out. That's why we looked at them, because we said, check it out. And this next person, he reminded us of this. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with my brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll glow. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal. Light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle. Ice, ice, baby. If you don't know it now, you're never going to know it, folks. Those are your three famous birthday boys and girls. Let's see. Going once. Going twice. Does anybody know them? If not, I'll give them to you just because we're going to run out of time. If not, number one in today's famous birthday trivia, Rob Schneider, comedian, actor, Rob Schneider. Number two, Adam Keith Horowitz, also known as Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys. And last but not least, Robert Matthew Van Winkle, a.k.a. Vanilla Ice, Ice, baby. <clears throat> That's right, folks. Vanilla Ice. Nice job. Guys, we got a, a winner over here, and I got to give it to her. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I've got to give it to her. <clears throat> well, you know why? She got it before I said them. So excellent job, Monse. Number one, as I said, Rob Schneider. Number two, Ad Rock as he's called, and number three, Vanilla Ice. And that brings us to today's Say What soundbite. This is Vanilla Ice. And they're asking him, you know, what happened if he got along with his colleagues being a white guy, and a lot of them were black in the hip-hop world, especially at that time. There was no Eminem or anything like that before. So he says, so I was that kid out there, and they were great friends. Eran buenos amigos. They embraced me, man. Me acogieron. He's talking about some of the pioneers. In so they said, "Oh, how did the other rappers treat you?" Because as I said, they were all black at that point. He get, and he's saying they treated him well. He goes, "They embraced me, man. My whole crowd was always black." He says, "Siempre mi mi, mi pandilla era negro. I never thought I'd play for white people until my music went number one." 
So there you go, folks. There's vanilla ice, ice baby. So I was that that kid out there, and they were they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until my music went number one. And you can hear that Florida accent. Yeah, man, man, I never played for the. You can hear him. You can, I I heard it right away, folks. We've got time for one more section, and it's name that lyric. Nope. Sorry, bye. Name the lyric. Name the lyric. Name the lyric. Name the lyric. Only on the show with no name. The show with no name. The show with no name. Name the lyric. Only on the show with no name. The show with no name. The show with no name. It's name the lyric. Only on the show with no name. That's right. That's right, amigos. It's name that lyric only on the show with no name. And I can't believe it. We just have minutes left here. I just want to thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. for Because right now and this whole past week or last week, I should say, my head has been here. Obviously, I have to. You can't do a live show. But I've also been very concerned about my daughter and uh, you guys just, you know, your your support. Your effort here has helped me forget that she's not feeling too well. So thank you, thank you, thank you, not only for your English effort, but for cheering me up these last few days where, well, it's been a, a tough week. Of course, anybody who has a sick kid will tell you it's never fun. In fact, a lot of times I'm like, I wish I could just take the virus and like she would be fine and I'll just, I'll ride it out till the end. No, you'll, but you can't, life doesn't work like that. <laughs> you can't just trade intercambiar. I wish it would be nice. So thank you, thank you, thank you, my amigos. Again, always a pleasure to have you here on board. Happy Halloween to all of you. I hope you're coming to the trivia night that's right around the corner. And let me give you, I'm going to give you the song because I want you to look up the lyrics and sing it with me. The song is The Beastie Boys and it's Sabotage. Listen, all of y'all, it's a sabotage. Listen, all of y'all, it's a sabotage. What a great video, too. We didn't talk about the Beastie Boys videos. I love them. So he says in the song, I can't stand it. No lo, no lo soporto. I know you planned it. Sé que lo planificaste. I'm going to set it straight. You know what this means. Voy a decir las cosas como pasaron, como, no? como era, la verdad. I'm going to set it straight. We looked at it in double trouble. This Watergate, Watergate is este escándalo. It's become synonymous with scandal. I can't stand rocking when I'm in here. No aguanto roquear cuando estoy aquí dentro. Because your crystal ball ain't so crystal clear. Porque tu bola de cristal no es tan clarito. All right. Well, my amigos, sing it with me. This is the Beastie Boys and Sabotage. Ow! Can't stand it. Sing it with me, folks. Can't stand it. I know you planned it. I'ma set it straight. This water gate. I can't stand rocking when I'm in here. Cause your crystal ball ain't so crystal clear. Huh. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis.